Wow, okay, so it is 10 10 on December 1st. <laughs> and I am just now recording this video for Vlogmas Day 2. I would say that this is going well. That's actually a lie. Um, wow. Okay, first of all, had no idea what I looked like before I grabbed the camera. This is a bit of a panic grab. Like, oh my gosh, and I need to record this video so I can edit it sometime. Oh my gosh, before going to bed? No, I'm probably gonna end up waking up early to edit this video. Happy Vlogmas Day 2. <laughs> what an intro! Um, okay, so first of all, give me my credit because I spent last night, I believe it was, doing a full calendar of vlogmas videos and blogs um, that I am going to be posting for the month of December so far. As far as uh, day one, week one goes, we're doing all right. Well, let's just stick with day one because, <laughs> woo! I'm probably gonna be messing with my hair for this whole video, let's pray not. Um, okay. <laughs> Jeez, what is going on? I think I, I look halfway presentable now. Uh, maybe not. But um, <laughs> this is your first time joining me for Vlogmas, welcome. You should definitely go back and check out Vlogmas Day 1, which was me uh, posting my prayer wall. I also posted it on Instagram, TikTok, and on my blog. Uh, for those who don't know, I do have a website and I haven't posted blogs on there since last year sometime, but I'm bringing that back up and running, especially because I pay all that money for the domain, so I need to use it. <laughs> so um, if you wanna know like all the links to the materials I used and all that kind of stuff, go check out my website. But today I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, one of the topics that was brought up. Um, I did pull my Instagram and just asked like, okay, if I were to do short vlogs for Vlogmas, because that is the goal is to just have some quick videos that go up um, so that we kind of check in each day. And I asked for um, topics that they would want updates on. So you all know that I moved in July. It's been a whirlwind of a year, a crazy year. And I just haven't been posting about um, my life and updates as much as I have in the past. Um, I've been a little bit more private about something. And in other ways, I've been kind of unintentionally private. Um, I just haven't really had a chance to sit down and really flush out my thoughts. And I don't know, I just, uh, it's been an interesting transition season. So I asked like, again, what topics uh, people want updates on. And so I've incorporated several of those throughout um, Vlogmas. And today's topic is life after PhD. Um, and so people were just interested in post-grad life and like what my experience has been thus far. And y'all, when I tell you, I think I have told you already um, in one of my previous videos since July that I really probably need to do a series on this. I don't know whether I wanna do it on my uh, website or if I wanna do like a video series, um, kinda like I did with Safe Single Left Behind, but I just feel called to really share about my journey with the PhD, my journey with college and um, life since then and how I'm just, how I'm dealing with it because I think I have a very unique experience. So boom, to set it up, um, the reality is that I've been struggling for years. If you've been following me, um, I announced that I was switching to the PhD track in 20, I didn't have a YouTube in 2017. So it had to have been 2018 spring that I was, that I told you guys I made the decision to switch the PhD track. And I remember feeling like really um, serious confirmation from God, um, from multiple messages I was getting from people. Just a lot of things seemed to line up around that. Um, but I would say very shortly after, and even maybe a little bit before then, I was starting to struggle with um, just my decision to be in school, my decision to pursue the school psychology degree um, and work as a school psychologist. If I haven't told this story before, I grew up wanting to be a teacher really bad, like really bad. To me, I know teachers have it hard and there's a lot of things going on um, related to educators and public school and all that kind of stuff. But my life goal when I was younger and honestly to me now, even still, I think 
one of the greatest jobs on the planet is teaching, particularly elementary school. Um, I loved my kindergarten teacher, really a lot of my elementary school teachers, but my my kindergarten and my first grade teachers were my, some of my favorite teachers and really by the end of first grade, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. Um, and it was deep, y'all, it was deep. But around high school, I started getting just discouraged. Um, people were, you know, giving the messages about like teachers don't get paid and, you know, just really discouraging me from going after teaching. And so I felt like I needed to look for something more. And um, so I did, I actually ended up, um, I might have talked about this before. I had to do a career paper for my portfolio for high school and I got down to like the last day or the day before the last day and I was panicking because I didn't know what I wanted to write about because I didn't want to write about the new teacher. And so I took literally this online career test that I found on Google somewhere and the results for me were education administration and school psychologist. And I'd never heard of a school psychologist so I Googled um, our National Association's website I Googled it. Um, well, I Googled school psychologist and that website came up. And um, I was reading about like the mission of school psychology and like what the field does and all of that. And I was just like sold. When I tell you, at that time, it felt like it still captured all of my passions around teaching um, and just kind of took it a step further. So I was pumped. Like it was just, I remember getting emotional. Like, wow, I have found the thing. And I remember trying to um, find undergrad programs that were school psychology and it took me a while to figure out that you actually have to get a psychology bachelor's um, and then you can go and do school psychology in grad school. So really at that point, my mind was set. Like I knew all the way through undergrad that I was going straight into grad school to be a school psychologist. It was set. However, I don't know if I've ever shared this actually, but my first couple years of grad school were challenging for me. Really that first semester, mine was blown because at first I was excited that some of the, a lot of the topics were like things that really like, yes, this is it. Like I felt like it was confirming my passions around why I even went after school psychology. But also simultaneously, I learned that school psychologists do um, psychological assessment for special education. And that is something I did not know prior to applying for a school psychology degree. And not only that, 90% and I would say 95% of our job as school psychology practitioners that are in schools is to do assessment for um, special education eligibility. So we're doing IQ assessments, we're doing social and emotional um, rating scales and analyzing those. We are writing these reports, we're doing interviews with families and teachers, observations in the classroom, like all of that. But 90% of it is really around that assessment piece um, in most schools around the country. And because um, special education is fe federally mandated, um, you know, we have these hard timelines that we have to stick to and there's a shortage of us across the country and so our caseloads end up being insane. Like if you know any school psychologist in your life, most people don't even know they exist, but they exist. And if you know any, just give them a hug. Um, give anyone in education a hug in these times, but definitely give your school psychologist a hug that you know. Because he or she is probably stressed out of their mind if they work for a public school particularly. Um, and it's just, it's, it's like hair on fire all the time. You can't give, um, like really your full best practices services to each and every student. Cause you just literally don't have the time. You just don't have the time. It doesn't work even in your best effort. It just, it, it, you can't, you can't do what the book says to do for every student. You will never meet a deadline and you will probably get fired. And so when I had that harsh realization, especially as grad school went on, like, oh snap, like we're getting trained in all of these amazing things, all of the things that are related to the mission of school psychology, but 90% of our job is stuck over here with special education eligibility and assessment. And I just was like, <laughs> um, Hmm, not sure if that's what I want to do with my life. Like, I really don't think that is fulfilling. 
I, you know, there are excellent school psychologists out there. I did my best in my time of being in practice while in training to give families um, the best services I could. I loved working with students. I loved being able to help families really understand psychological assessment and what to look for in special education and advocating for families, advocating for students, especially underserved and minoritized students. Absolutely. But that part of the work consuming my entire job was just like this is not there's just so much more to me than that when i came into school it was like oh i'm gonna just get my license go work as a school psychologist i originally was just going to get the education specialist degree i wasn't even going to get the phd i was just going to get the eds so i can go practice Kumbaya, I give my license so I can go practice and be in the school. So when I quickly figured out what the job was actually going to be, it was like, uh oh. So that really bled into like all parts of my education experience in grad school where I was really just like, uh, like I'm going to finish this. I am that kind of person where if I start something and finishing it, there's no, you know, oh, it didn't work out. Oh, I didn't whatever. I changed my mind. Like, no. No, I don't come from a rich family, okay? The the time and money investments and all the things that people had invested in me, I felt like I needed to finish. Like, that's just, that's what it was, right? Um, to honor God, to honor myself, I need to finish what I started. Um, and I didn't want to regret not finishing. So, I knew I was going to finish, but because of all these things that I shared, it, it was very hard for me. Like, extremely extremely hard for me like it's already hard to get through grad school when you've gone straight through school literally from preschool all the way through college I did nine years of college after high school like I was exhausted I was I mean y'all saw it like <laughs> them videos I look back like whoop up I'm surprised I have subscribers still because I felt like I cried in every video last year like sis are you good no no, I was not good. I was not, I was not good. <laughs> there was, no, <laughs> I was unwell. And I still am, it would be all the way real. I am still living in the remnants of being so unwell and so <sighs> miserable. Is that a word I can use? I don't know. I don't wanna dramatize it, but I also wanna keep it 100 with you guys that I was not happy. And that's just a fact, Jack. I was not happy. I wanted to be done with school. I wanted to be done with everyone. Burnout was my middle name. No, burnout was my first name. Burnout was my first middle and last name. <laughs> and a suffix because it just, wow. Um, and so because of you, because of being in that burnout state and like just over it, not feeling passionate about what I'm doing, pretty much sure that I'm like in not doing what I should be doing. Should is a, a strong word, but it just was like, what the heck am I doing? I mean, seriously, what am I doing? Um, and I would also look at like a lot of my other friends who were in PhD programs who were doing what they were put on this earth, I feel like, to do. Like it just looked different. It, it it looked different on them. And I'm not saying this from a comparison standpoint. I'm just saying like, they just looked fulfilled. They looked excited. They were, you know, looking and seeking for all these extra opportunities. And, you know, it bled through their social medias and everything. Like, they lived it. I did not. Like, I don't know if people really wrap their heads around it. Because a lot of my community is just like happy they got somebody who was in a PhD program, like that blows their mind. That's something like, you know, they love to say, you know, that's a rare thing coming from my community. But apples to apples, like really looking at it from a perspective of me as a PhD student, I did not fully engage. I was not the least engaged. Um, like there are, I'm sure, I know of <laughs> people who were less engaged than I was, like, you know, I did lead our student organization. I led our black um, grad caucus. I led our school psych association, student association. So I did things. I presented at conferences. You know, I did that kind of stuff. But like from a perspective of did I go after every opportunity or a lot more opportunities? No, because I was not invested fully. Like I, 
I feel like I was only half invested in the journey. Um, and I'm also very hard on myself, so I do realize that my perspective of what I did is probably tainted somewhat. But I know for a fact that like, if you look at me in undergrad when I was really like in my element, like I was just, I was in it. I was, a, I was energetic. I was exhausted too back then because I was doing probably entirely too much. But I just, I lived it differently. And I, in my head, peaked. And then grad school was like me dragging on in this area that just was not giving me life. Like, and it, it and it's also difficult being someone who's very good at a lot of different things. And I don't say that from a place of like pride or ego or whatever. Like I'm not trying to flex on y'all. I literally mean that when you have a lot of different talents and I just was exposed to so much growing up with the creative arts, performing arts, that um, really equipped me. I mean, leadership programs, um, all kinds of like academic things. Like I really was exposed to so much and I gained a lot of skills in a lot of different things. And it makes it very hard for you to narrow that down somewhere and like stick that to the wall. Cause it's like, I don't feel like I'm using all of those skills if I'm just over here and definitely not in the field <laughs> I hate to say it like this but definitely not in the field of school psychology do I fully see myself like using all the gifts that God has given me or even a majority of them um and like really feeling fulfilled like I just I don't see it and that's kind of crazy to say out loud I am literally a licensed school psychologist <laughs> I am literally working as a content expert right now as a postdoc scholar and what I'm telling you is I'm not entirely fulfilled um take that how you may I'm just being honest these are the updates y'all asked for and this video is actually much longer than I ever intended um wow this is kind of funny so yeah i struggled um i'm trying to wrap this up in some kind of quickness but i really struggled um coming into this job mainly because i came straight off of burnout and then started a job that i wanted my career to feel separate from school like i didn't want to feel like i was still in school and for the first couple months even sometimes now a little less now but the first couple months I, I felt like I was still in school and so when I was done with school when I was done with my PhD when I was done with the dissertation when I tell y'all I was rejecting anything that remotely felt like school like any kind of structure that felt like school any kind of like even people putting any kind of demand on me like I could not handle demands being put on me like I didn't want to do anything like nothing i know i joked in the other video like y'all are lucky i even like wipe my own butt on a regular basis because even that was like it felt like a lot to do that's dramatic but it it's like i'm laughing but i'm also serious <laughs> because i just did not want to do anything i wanted everyone not everyone to leave me alone in the sense of like i need to go be by myself although that might have been a good thing. I really think I do need a solo trip somewhere at some point, even if it's like for two, three weeks, just to just woosa. But I just wanted to, I wanted no pressure put on me. I didn't want anyone to expect anything of me. It was like, listen, I scraped my knees to get to the finish line. I did this for myself, but it also felt like it was for other people. It was for, it was like a requirement and so I didn't want any other requirements of me. It was like I did the thing. I did the thing that most of y'all say people can't do. I did the thing that only 2% of people in the nation, black people, is it black people or people in general? In the nation have ever done which is get a doctorate degree, a PhD even. I don't talk to me. <laughs> I can't do anything for you. Leave me alone. <laughs> so starting a new job right off of that was just, it was hard. Like starting a new job at that point you know being out of school for a lot of people as a postdoc even like postdoc um for those who don't know what that position is it is essentially like a, a waiting period between like i just got my degree my phd or my doctorate degree and i want time to do like some research gain some extra experience before i go and apply to be like faculty of a graduate program somewhere typically at like a research one institution 
so post that gives you time like if you didn't really get a lot of um like publications and things like that a lot of research in your program then you have time to like really build your cv before you go and apply elsewhere that is not at all why your girl accepted this position um not even not even a little bit does that have anything to do with why i accepted this position i actually shocked all of my doctoral friends that knew because i always told them like a postdoc Never would I ever. Faculty, no thanks. Y'all got it. Don't need it. I'm not about to be chasing after tenure. Don't want it. No thank you. Um, and so when I accepted a postdoc, they were like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know. Um, but this postdoc position is really like consultation. It's translational research, so really like community-based research, like doing interventions, doing things with people, doing things in the community, which is why I accept it is because it's not your traditional like I'm just behind a computer somewhere typing and doing research and lit reviews you know all day long so where was I going with explaining all that with you wow starting the position obviously a postdoc coming right out of you know your PhD a lot of people are like energetic and you know new to the career so you're like hit the ground running and you're excited and you want to do all the things and you want to change the world and so every opportunity they throw at you you're like yes i want to do it and you know you just have this energy and this vigor child not i <laughs> baby not i when i tell you i literally came off of my internship okay in virginia was writing site reports up to 20 pages sometimes up until june 30th okay i had about a week to pack my life i think then i uh, moved out of virginia came back to ohio then i went on vacation for a week moved into my apartment in columbus had a week in my apartment and then started the job where was the rest where was the peace where was the i'm just chilling i don't have any responsibilities i'm too old for that silly kid stuff too old yeah i got responsibilities now responsibilities i didn't want no responsibilities <laughs> i did not want no responsibilities okay and i didn't really have the time to not have no responsibilities i had responsibilities and uh, <laughs> i'm cracking myself up it is 10 37 why am i still talking okay um so i had no break and so when i started the job i did not i was not energetic okay your girl was not ready to say yes to every opportunity and they were throwing them okay they're like we saw your dissertation defense and we have high expectations and we are we love what you do we love what you st and i was just like mm-hmm okay like just nodding and on the inside like i'm on fire because i'm just like i don't want to no i don't want to do none of this i'm tired okay i know it's not y'all's fault i know i just started here y'all have nothing to do with what i just went through for the past nine years slash 21 years of my life and this trauma from the dissertation and all of the above but what I need y'all to know is I'm tired and I don't want to do none of this stuff that y'all saying. So um, it was hard, y'all. It just, it was really hard to find a care. It was really hard to like, even just show up. Like I work from home. Um, and so that adjustment was really strange. I've been uh, teaching one class just a semester in my, um, in the program I actually graduated from. I don't know if I told y'all that, but yes, I teach a course. Um, but other than that, you know, working from home, that in itself is an adjustment. Like, I'm not used to that kind of a routine. And so between that and already being burnt out, like, y'all, I was struggling. Mental health in the, in the tank. Like, truly not, just not not well and i found myself just kind of rejecting everything like i would i felt like i was putting on a face like i put on a face to go to work which was really like log logging on zoom meetings and i would smile and i would nod and i would say the things and i would be the smart girl and then i would log off and my whole body would just like deflate you know it, it just it, i felt like i was acting i felt like i was not my true self and it was painful and honestly it still lingers sometimes i think i'm in somewhat of a better place um with some other adjustments that have happened in my life and i'm really starting to get more settled in my space and in this season but 
it was a challenge like to say the very least those first couple months were like man i cried a lot i was not adjusting well to career life to oh my gosh and then my first paycheck was like not even close to anything i ever thought i was going to be making <laughs> And actually, as a postdoc, I'm making just under or exactly $10,000 less than what I could have been making as a school psych. So then I was regretting it. Like, even though <laughs> being a school psych was painful, it was like, okay, but I could have been making this much money and blah, blah, blah. So all of that, like, adulting transition, first career transition, hit your girl, okay? And it was tough. <laughs> I, I just, it was weird to be in a space of like wow after all this time like people praised me for like wow you're only 27 and you're a doctor and you know you went straight through school and you know you always knew what you wanted to do like how awesome is that and this is like the true testament of like what you see is not always the full story it's like never the full story actually um because i have been blessed i'm never gonna take that for granted to say that my education you know is not a blessing that the opportunities i've had are not a blessing that the lord hasn't covered me over this whole journey i'm not saying any of that but what i am doing is like critically looking at my experience and saying like okay yeah what does this really mean for me as a person and the truth is that although some people are like you know again praising me for going straight through school that had some really detrimental impacts on me um and even on my experience with the phd i feel like people who take a break after undergrad um or even after high school i don't know about that i don't think i needed a break then but taking a break after undergrad to work to explore like you know what i really want to do i think if i had done that then i could have saved myself from going after and spending five years studying for a very specific job and career that i am now like 95 percent sure i don't want to do like ever in life <laughs> um so I don't know, a break there might have been like really life changing to get that experience. And then for me, all of the older students or those who had gone and like worked and done other things before coming back to um, the do a, like a PhD or a master's or something like that. To me, they always have more to contribute to the conversations, to group projects. Like there was, they just had so much robust experience. I feel like they had a lot less of imposter syndrome because they had the experience, right? So now they were just kind of coming and they knew that this was something that they wanted to do. You know, they have life experiences that have really led them to this point. Like that wasn't the case for me. It was like, well, I'm pretty sure this is what I want to do. And I have these skills enough to get into a program like this. And so I'm just going to do it. And it's just a very different place to be in when you're going straight through. Burnout is real. And I was, I was burnt. <laughs> burnt to a crisp y'all so everyone's golden question for me right now is like what kind of career like what where will you end up like what's your career goal and i always tell them i just laugh and i say like i literally have no idea i always thought i would know i always thought i had like my plan set out and everything was all planned and scheduled out i literally have no idea this postdoc position that i'm in is one to three years I couldn't even begin to tell you where I'm gonna end up at the end of this postdoc. I could very well end up a manager at McDonald's. <laughs> okay, maybe not, but also maybe, who knows? I just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in a state where I like, I would be perfectly okay with a year off of everything. I don't know how I'd make that work financially, other than to like really dive into like my creative space to be able to pay my bills. But um, a year just away from everything is I think so necessary for me to like figure out who I am for real, you know, like outside of expectations, outside of school, outside of everything. I just wanna know like who is Gaby? What does she want? What kind of life does she wanna live? like reimagining my future because I've always imagined it as a school psychologist. Um, 
so yeah i just i feel like i need that time to just let my creative mind be free maybe one day i'll just be brave and say like i'm gonna do it regardless of the consequences i don't know and i literally never thought i would be talking like this you guys like it is probably crazy for a lot of you to hear to have watched my journey to have seen everything i went through for the phd and then to be talking like this i know I know, I literally have considered going into ministry. I actually had an offer recently. Someone offered me a ministry position. And I, I, all I'm gonna let y'all know is a girl was thinking about it, okay? And if circumstances were a little bit different, I might have said yes. That is how much my life could potentially look 100%, 180 different than what I ever thought. Um, so I don't know, I, I, we just here. Literally right now I am taking it day by day. I am praying, I hope this is focusing while I'm walking. I am praying about like, Lord, where do you want me? Do you want me where I am right now? Um, which I do believe that I am where I am right now for a purpose. Um, so what is that purpose, Lord? Help me to be patient in the waiting season and be diligent with whatever skills and talents that you've given me and however I'm supposed to be using those right now. Um, and then keeping my ears and eyes open and peeled whatever he's going to do next. And the Lord has always led me from place to place, from glory to glory, literally. So why would he fail me now? Like why would anything be different now? It's not. So I'm trusting with a little bit of fear because I'm like, what the heck? Like I got all this student loan debt, all this stuff, Lord. What was the purpose? I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I don't know, but we are just, yeah. We are staying the course and we'll see what the Lord decides to do with it. So I have talked so long, this vlogmas is wow. And I look whatever kind of way, y'all welcome. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is gonna be a fun vlogmas. Um, so yeah, I hope that's a good enough update for those who were interested and asked about it. Like I said, maybe in some way in the future, I will delve into some of these topics I brought up today a little bit more but for now that is all i have for you i'm going to shut this off so i can maybe either edit it tonight or in the morning but it will be up for vlogmas day two i hope you are enjoying this so far um i have already made my schedule but if there's something that you want to make sure is um included in vlogmas or an update or whatever drop it in the comment section i appreciate you guys so much and i will see you tomorrow for vlogmas day three